Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, it's Brian Gregg. I'm here with a quick follow-up to my D3 screencast. A um, couple of things that I just wanted to touch on I thought might be of interest to anybody who's working with um, multiple data sets. And uh, here it goes. Uh, so the last time we took a look at the uh, dashboard that we were working on, uh, we were working on this bar chart here. Uh, but what I wanted to do was I wanted to add in another uh, pie chart in here, which was going to show the distribution of uh, a population rather than by the individual ages. I'm grouping them by their uh, specific um, uh, generation. So you've got millennial, generation X, baby boomer, etc. cetera. Um, <clears throat> the challenge here is that we didn't have this as part of our original data set. So in order to get this uh, in this format, there's a couple of things that we had to do in order to get this right. One, we need to get a data set that has the generations by age group. We need to join that data set with our JSON data object. And we need to summarize that data uh, so that we can get it into this format here. Uh, so I'm going to run through these things quickly here and uh, hopefully you get something out of this. So the first thing that we need to do is <coughs> we needed to get our data set with the age groupings. So here we have our generation.json and this is actually a JSON file that I created uh, which includes uh, the titles for each of the individual uh, generation groupings, as well as their min and max ages for those. And uh, remember, this is based off of 2010 data, so I uh, uh, used the ages uh, that would have fallen into those respective groups for that year. Now, once we have this data set, uh, we've got a little bit of a challenge here within our uh, main JavaScript file. Uh, that is, uh, originally we only had one data set that we needed to pull in. Now we're pulling in two data sets. And generally this isn't a problem, but because we're uh, loading data as asynchronously in JavaScript, uh, we need to make sure that both of those data sets are fully loaded before we actually start doing any processing with them. Um, and we could do this by using multiple callbacks or promises. Uh, but uh, D3 actually has the capability built in to do this uh, by using D3.q. You can uh, defer and pass the, um, well, D3.json is the format that we're using. And then we can pull in each of these individual JSON uh, data sets uh, with their own respective calls to the defer function. And what this will do is it'll pull in both of those data sets, wait for both of them to be fully loaded before it uh, calls this await function, which is going to pass our two data sets, uh, which will reference as D and G. So um, just to recap, uh, we're using D3.Q to queue up multiple data sets, pulling those in, and uh, setting them to D and G. Easy enough. Once we have those data sets in there, um, the bar charts doesn't change, right? We still call our render function on our bar graph and we pass the, the data set D and the metric that we're going to be, um, that we're going to be uh, displaying. But for our pie chart, it's not gonna be that easy because if we pass that data set D and just so that we can take a look at what that looks like, there's no generation grouping in here. So uh, the way that we're going to uh, handle that is first we are going to create a new variable called dj which is just our data grouped and uh, we're going to use the map function this is one of the array prototypes uh, uh, built-in functions uh, which is going to uh, create a <coughs> copy of our data set but mapping the values from our new data set together with the values from our original data set into DG. So uh, we initialize a value of title 
and then uh, we take our G data set. Remember, G data set was the second data set we were pulling in, which is our generation.json. So we're going to loop through our G array. And if the age of object, and object is the, um, the data set that we're uh, referencing in our map function, which is uh, a reference to our D data set. So if the age is less than the minimum age from our E data set, which is our generation data, and if the age is less than the minimum, I'm sorry, is greater than the minimum or less than the maximum uh, for the age groupings, we're going to set the title to the uh, title from our generation file. So this may be a little bit confusing. Maybe we can spell this out a little bit more here. Let's just say, let's clear the console, refresh. Okay, great. So it starts with our first entry in our data set. So the first entry in our object, which we're mapping is zero. It checks the min and max is zero and 14. So zero is between those numbers. So it sets it to generation Z. And it just keeps going up through 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 is set to generation Z. The next one, 15, that starts the next group, which is 15 to 30. And that's going to be millennial. So you'll see how this is going to iterate through every entry in our um, in our D object in our original data set and uh, then it's going to take a look at the values from our G data set for each of those and if the value is within the bounds that we've set for this uh, uh, particular dimension it is going to set the title equal to the title from our uh, new generation lookup table. And then it's going to return that uh, an object with that title and with the total, the number of males and the number of females. And that's going to be our DG. If we clear this out and we actually take a look at what DG looks like after that processing is complete. We'll see we now have 101 objects and it has the number of females, the number of males, the total number of uh, population and the generation. Now here's the thing that's a, that, that gets a little tricky though, is all we did was map that into the original data set. We didn't actually reduce the data set. So we have here, this is the uh, value from the data set that represented age one. And this is the value from the data set that represented age two. So we now have all of our mappings, but we don't have the data reduced. So that's the next thing that we have to do. And D3 actually has a built-in function called nest, which um, we can use to uh, call on the global D3 object. And uh, we can pass the key, the key is going to take as a parameter a function, which uh, we pass our data set, and we return the value of generation. It also has a uh, can take a rollup function, which we can use to uh, calculate the sum of the total. So let's take a look at what that looks like here. this again and what we're doing here is we have now taken our data set which was originally a hundred objects large and we've reduced it down to six 
one for Generation Z, one for Millennial, one for Generation X, one for Baby Boomer, etc. with the respective values aggregated for the individual dimensions. Uh, and we were able to do that by passing a uh, function to key, which returned our uh, value that we wanted to group by, and uh, passing a function to roll up, which included the summation of the values that we wanted to roll up. And uh, here we declare uh, entries of DG, which tells us which data set that we want to use. Remember, we're using DG because DG is the uh, data set that we mapped our um, generation data to. So it's a mapping of our data and our generation data sets. Then um, it's really as simple as calling our pie chart, uh, the render function on our pie chart, and passing group as the data set. Group, again, is the data set that we just rolled up. And uh, passing uh, value, value is the summation of the total that we calculated in our uh, aggregation function. This is what we're missing. Let's close that. Um, I did not go over this pie chart. Um, uh, there's plenty of examples of pie charts out there. I've also will be putting this pie chart out on uh, GitHub if you want to take a look at how this is coded. Uh, but it follows a lot of the same uh, standards that we did for our bar chart in that um, we declare an object, uh, functions for tooltips and removing tooltips, and then all of our standard init, enter, update, and exit functions, and then our render function, which calls all of those uh, respectively. So, uh, you know, feel free to take a look at this. Um, but uh, basically, this is going to function the same way. It's going to take our group and our value, and it is going to render this nice pie chart here. And I've set the tooltips up so we can see which one of these represent. There we go. This little sliver here is the greatest generation. Here's your Generation Z, your Millennials, your Gen Xs, your Baby Boomers, and your Silent Generation. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, if you are uh, interested more in these topics, uh, definitely let me know. Twitter, ignore intuition. Uh, post on my YouTube channel. Uh, uh, whatever way you can get in touch with me, more than happy to uh, share this information as um, uh, people request it. So uh, look forward to hearing some of your feedback.